Alright, video. Um, yeah, it's probably going to be a long video. And, uh, you know, I'll do my best here. Sun's sort of in my way a little bit. Um, but anyway, I'm going to do this uh, play the Dawkins video. Yeah, that sun's really a problem. Anyway, we'll just have to work around it. Should figure this out ahead of time. <laughs> I thought I did, actually. Uh, but I can see. Ooh, that's no good. I gotta move over here further. Alright, that works. And I gotta turn this camera. So, I'm crooked. But, so what? Um, you know. Whatever. So, I should be talking here. Yeah, okay. And now, uh, yeah, I'm with the show. Um, anyway, yeah, so it's just, it's gonna be a long video. I'm just talking, uh, rough drafty kind of stuff. So, you can skip this one. Uh, in volume two, I will try to put the argument together more concisely again. So anyway, just a Drake equation kind of stuff. But the other point about intelligent life in the universe, um, never mind how we define intelligence, they're only, we're only going to encounter them if they are intelligent enough either to come here, which is very difficult indeed, or to send radio transmissions to us, which is a lot easier, but still requires Let's just define it as, as the quality that you need in order to send information across the universe. Now, you don't have to call that intelligence, but whatever it is, that's what it needs in order to get here, in order for us to, to apprehend it. And I wonder, you know, surely you've walked past a worm that had just crawled out of the earth, and when you did so, you weren't saying to yourself, gee, I wonder what that worm is thinking. You didn't, you just simply did <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just right there. Um, anyway, so this is this Tyson guy, and that other guy's Dawkins, of course. Um, yeah, I really don't like this Tyson guy. He's kind of a, <laughs> he's kind of pompous. Um, but you know, he talks well. Um, so anyway, I mean, even that premise that somehow you, in your interaction with the rest of the world, never contemplated what an you know, earthworm was feeling or thinking or doing, as even as a kid. It's just nonsense. I mean, you do make those evaluations, and you're kind of taught that, well, look, you know, it's a practical matter. It's a bug. Just step on it. Um, you know, that's sort of a um, a throwaway bit of philosophy that we just pragmatically decide that uh, will discount the welfare of those bugs. Now, you change the equation just slightly, you know, and have earthworms um, meow and um, look at you with a little smiley face you know even if they had that really dim intelligence I mean that's all it would take for us to care enough to you know be a little distracted um, so his arguments kind of bogus Dawkins is just pointing out that you have to make some noise in the universe for us to know you exist um, you have to change the environment significantly and dramatically um, you know <laughs> And I, I would I would think that you know a nuclear weapon or two will make enough noise. Um, but anyway, let's continue. You care. You're so far beyond the. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm imagining you simply really don't care what the worm is thinking, and the worm, conversely, has no clue that you consider yourself intelligent. You're just this thing that went by. So can you imagine a species that has such high intelligence that the prospect of communicating with us is simply of no interest to them. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Now, see, it, but, you know, this is a common thing, and I just don't get this one either. Um, you know, w intelligence is um, is knowing things, and everybody keeps talking like we don't know anything, and like all the important things we don't know, and it's just I think the opposite. The important things are kind of easy to know. It's the details, the little tiny minutia crap that's a little bit elusive. All right, yeah, we don't know the end of the universe. We don't know a few of these mechanical details, but we know it's a car, you know, and I guess that's what I would, that would be a good analogy is you don't know, you don't have to know how the engine works. You don't have to know how the air conditioner works. You don't have to know how all these things work in a car. You just have to know what it does and how it functions and what its utility is and to understand the context of why it was created and what it's what it's doing we have that information we can identify what we are 
we can identify what the living things are. And I think we've done it falsely as a, as a society and culture and as a species, generally speaking. Um, you know, we're living a lie that it's, um, you know, some grand adventure when all it is is reproducing chemistry run a fucking muck. Excuse my frickin' French. And they go by and we, their intelligence is on such a level that we can't even recognize it yes. as intelligence. Yes. And moreover, I think it, it would more or less have to. I mean, it's just, I mean, how can you not recognize it? I mean, again, you, you, there, there's no, it, that just doesn't make any sense. It's like they're, they're talking like somehow cars get so sophisticated in how they function that we can't recognize that they're vehicles of conveyance anymore. I mean, that's just bullshit. It doesn't matter how many fins and and hydro whatevers and anti-gravity blah blah blahs you put on it. We're going to understand what a vehicle is. Um, the basic concepts of, of life are, um, are <laughs> very, very reachable, very attainable. You don't need a high intelligence to do that. Um, I mean, a low intelligence gets you in trouble because you make some bad guesses. And we made some really bad guesses and got caught up in some bad paradigms of, of religion and superstition. And if we just abandon that, there's very little complicated about discerning um, the, the meaningful intelligence, the part that has to do with how our psychology operates, how our biology operates, how the physics we exist in operate. This is all just chemistry, physics, and psychology. Be that much ahead of us if we were ever to meet them, because we're never going to get there. Yeah, we're so, no. we sure as hell not getting there. And but, so, so great. So you see the NASA budget lately? It would, yeah. It's not. Yeah, well, it's a, a research budget that would be necessary, not just come some sort of NASA budget. Um, stupid trips to Mars probably aren't a very good way to spend the money. The money's better spent on proving theoretical science, um, you know, not trying to do something practical. Uh, but anyway, that's a whole different subject. But even that statement is empty. <laughs> you know, we're sure as hell not getting there. Well, if we can't do it, then they can't do it. So that's what you should have said, is that you think there's some barrier that we just can't cross. That would have been the more rational answer, is just to explain the, the preposterously difficult physics. And then even if we have another 10,000 years or 20,000 years, some of that physics might not be anything we can overcome, where we could actually send sentient organisms on some trip. We'd have to just send a representative probe named Gary, maybe. So anything that gets here has got to have a very, very highly developed technology, far more than we've... Than we've uh, that brings us to Stephen Hawking's concern about any civilization sufficiently advanced to visit us. What does that say about the consequence of that encounter? Yeah. And he's worried, of course, because he's taking his cue from the history of humans. Yeah, it sounds like he's taking his cue from cliche B science fiction movies. I mean, that's just so stupid. Like, oh yeah, the aliens are going to come to get us. I mean, you know, it is, it is really, really, really high science. You've just conceded. It takes preposterously high science to do this um, deep space travel thing. And uh, to argue that somehow... Um, an, an organism capable of acquiring that kind of understanding, uh, uh, that kind of depth of understanding. They've dissected the mechanical universe in detail. And to argue that they wouldn't have spent any time dissecting their own motivations and that they wouldn't have any conception of um, good and bad. Um, they would, I think, to have intelligence, you have to have sentience first. They'd be feeling creatures. They'd know the value of a feeling. They wouldn't have any... <laughs> there would be no logical interest in going out into the universe to go find something to step on. Let's go find some bugs to squish. I mean, that is just... I mean, it, it, Stephen Hawking is a fucking retard, if that's what he thinks is probable or likely, or even in the realm of reasonable possibility.
if one has a more advanced technology than the other and they visit, uh, it almost is always bad for those with the lesser technology. And <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? Clubs and swords or something? Or, you know, suit of armor versus arrows? I mean, you know, how, how far back are, are, a record are you going to analyze and say this is where a human being is? Come on. <laughs> it's just silly. South America, one of the sort of more obvious examples in their first encounter with the Spaniards. So, um, this, or, I'm, I don't know if I want to be the first one to shake hands or to shake whatever, whatever, they, whatever, 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 shake, yes. whatever they're sticking forward. <laughs> I, I don't know. Right. So, you know, with you're not going to concede that it was basically knowledge and intelligence that enabled us to see past dumb, ignorant bigotries. Um, we abolished slavery, newsflash, and we did it because we realized it's just really stupid. Um, we abolished the, you know, we gave women rights, we gave human beings rights, we wrote constitutions, we've changed the complete we've completely changed how human beings interact in a lot of ways. Yes, we're still selfish animals, but we're no we're not stupid anymore. <laughs> we're not dumb enough to think you can win by enslaving your neighbor. Come on. I, I so I have, I'm I, I want to do it, but I I still have my my concerns. What do you think are the odds that there is life elsewhere? Uh, they must be high, and, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> yeah, you don't say shit, but go ahead. People say, well, have you found life yet? No. Well, there, you know, that's like going to the ocean, as has been said before, taking a cup of water, scooping up, and saying, there are no whales in the ocean, you know? <laughs> Here's my day. <laughs> yeah, but the... Uh... You know that's not exactly a, an accurate metaphor. There's lots of ways to 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 make the argument of improbability, and so um, you know we because we the 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 existence of this um, plentiful life would be a sample that you should find in all parts of the universe. All right, it shouldn't be like whales. Well, it's where it's confined to one big giant whale in the universe, so. There should be bits of whale sign in every cup of ocean if it's if life is that um, realistically probable. And so your new probe and looking at your your planets and your suns and your stars and all that crap. Well, even if you're only dissecting one percent of the universe, that one percent should contain a piece of what you're looking for. So it's just a it's a bogus analogy or metaphor. Whatever it is. Data, you know? <laughs> you, you need a slightly bigger sample. And so, if you look at, for example, what we call the radio bubble, this is the sphere around Earth, centered on Earth, which is the farthest our radio signals have reached in the galaxy. And they're about 70 light years away. We've been transmitting radio signals inadvertently leaking into space for about 70 years. 70 light year radio. Right, and what he's not going to say here is that, you know, the universe, the, we were sort of not, we're sort of in the middle age in terms of when life formed on Earth. So there could have been, if life forming on some other star, would it could have been millions of years ahead of us in terms of when their Earth formed and when their Earth was um, fertile for this life thing to take place. So they could have, uh, they could even have an, a billion year head start on us. A billion year head start. And so their bubble would be a billion light years. All right, not 70,000, not 70 light years, a billion light years. Yes, sphere. Well, how big is the galaxy? We'll shrink that sphere down to maybe the size of a BB, and then the galaxy on that scale would be the size of this stage. That's how far our radio signals have traveled. And those aren't even the ones we sent on purpose. The ones we sent on purpose have traveled much less. So no, we haven't actually um, 